Welcome back, Officers of the Republic. Is your course on Honorable Police Chief AP Gaines here, and today we're going to be going over a mid-ish game, a guide to the Places of Power Assault Battle. Now, there's a couple of different strategies you can implement depending on the strengths and weaknesses of your roster. Now, we can all basically surmise that Gear 12 is pretty much pushing the limit of Challenge Tier 1. We're going to need some big damage elsewhere. Lots of people are relicking their Darth Vader because of its solo viability. So I'm going to say this is a mid-game viable option because it's become fairly commonplace to see higher level relics on Vader as opposed to other Sith characters. Now what we make up the rest of the squad with is going to depend on what your strengths are. I prefer oops, I prefer the entire Triumvirate in there. And then the fifth slot, if you have a relic out Darth Revan, you could do the damage. If you have a really good relic out Basilashonic could do good damage. And both of those will work for me, but what I'm going to show is I'm going to throw in a Gear 11 Palpatine. The reason I'm throwing him in is this U unique. We'll basically make the Jedi pay for being alive each turn. So I'm not going to get the damage of Darth Revan or the control of the Basilashon, but I'm going to bring this in just to prove a point that uh, just having that unique active is somewhat viable. And uh, his uh, health regeneration is also somewhat useful. So the main strategy I would call it is Darth Vader is going to basically do all of the damage and everyone else serves a function on their own. Trey is in here to help uh, reduce cooldowns for Nihilus and isolate people who could be dangerous plus her unique allows them to avoid debuffs. Darth Vader is going to do all the damage. Nihilus is going to annihilate as much as humanly possible so he gets that stacking health so that by the time you get to the end, if you're going challenge tier 1, which is pretty hard for my roster, or challenge tier 2, which my roster might be able to push if it was Relic 1. So if you're in that challenge tier 2, you want to have that Nihilus, or even the lower tiers if you have a weaker Sith team. Nihilus, every time he annihilates, gets really, really beefy, so it allows him to survive, have more viability at the end in uh, tier 8. So I'm simply just going to have Darth Vader do a bunch of damage, work his way through. As you can see, he's doing not great damage, but he's doing, I mean, 25,000 damage as opposed to 4 and 5,000 damage is definitely a big boost. Now, Scion, I think, is super important here because of his longevity through the eight uh, tiers that you have to go through. Because he can throw down Held by Hatred, he can, in fact, revive himself, which is super useful. As you can see, they take big damage from the dots, also from uh, the continuous damage of Emperor Palpatine being alive. Now they're all going to get pain because I have the Zeta on Nihilus. If you don't have the Zeta on Nihilus, they're not going to get this pain from them attacking him with their AoEs, which is pretty common. But you can still throw down his AoE and get some mass pain going on, which is super helpful. Throw on this AoE. Now if you're wondering why I didn't uh, drain all of their life at the beginning in the first round, I'm saving it for this round because there are more characters more enemies in this round, so if Nihilus can eventually take his turn before I kill anyone, let me make sure I don't kill anyone off, he'll have an extra person to steal from, which will be very good. Now as you see they're dying from the, every time they take a turn they take damage from Emperor Palpatine, and then they take damage from Dots, which stack and won't go away because of the Vader lead Zeta. Now this will kill off a lot of people before they even take a turn, which is the main sticking point of this uh, strategy is that they're basically working against themselves. So if you happen to have a stronger EP, it would be more helpful because it'll last longer. Uh, you'll get to have these beautiful stuns and this healing more often. As you can see, I don't need to annihilate these guys because they're super weak, but I'm going to get out as many annihilates as possible because it will allow me to stack up that health and make them super beefy for the last battle with the entire Jedi Council. All right, we're doing some damage over here. As you can see, they're starting to kill themselves. It's pretty satisfying watching them die before you have to actually really do anything to them. So he'll probably end up dying. Nope, not quite, almost. We'll take him out, or her rather. Put her out of her misery. There we go. Now, Tier 4 is interesting. People always say, well, just annihilate Anakin if you have your Annihilate ready. I usually just annihilate 5s because Anakin's pretty easy to kill. 
and uh, fives is a little bit beefier, so I just find it more convenient to throw that annihilate on fives if I happen to have it at that moment. Now I popped that thinking that he didn't have that healing immunity, but he did. So I'm going to pop this just to get a little bit more health, and then just to make sure I can get some more pain so that they start to target him, I'm going to throw that up. Now we got five people up, so we're going to increase all their cooldowns and get the maximum decrease of our cooldowns. We'll pass around all of the Merciless Massacre. Very beautiful. Now, he has slightly more health, so I am going to kill him here and then go after Anakin. The reason I didn't kill Anakin first was because I wanted to use that Culling Blade on a guy. I might not have be able to one-shot um, with my basic attack, so I just thought that a guaranteed kill over there would be more beneficial than uh, taking it a little bit safe. Alright, so we have our Annihilate, which I should have used, but I messed up there. If Nihilus gets another turn, I would love to harvest all of Five's beautiful health. But I might actually, I'm thinking I'm going to save it for the next tier just so that I can get someone out early. Hopefully Scion doesn't die. He probably won't. He's uh, gear 12, he's not great. Uh, not fantastically modded, as you guys know, I don't mod my characters. Uh, so... If we can get a nice little Annihilate here, hopefully EP doesn't die before we can throw this up. There we go. Got some dots on the field, some nice little basic attacks. I'll throw this over here because he's going to get annihilated, so I don't want to waste any big damage over there. Alright, there we go, he's back up to stuff. Now we'll get him out of here. All right, hopefully EP gets another turn so he can take advantage of that health steal. If they die this quickly, he might not get a chance. <laughs> All right, looks like he's getting a turn in here. Finally, just one turn so we can get slowly up. So our Nihilist is looking pretty beefy at this moment, which is nice. I'll probably get one more Annihilate in before the final battle. Ooh, that's not good. I'm going to throw this over here just to see if I can keep him alive just a little bit longer. Oh, uh, it did not work. Okay, so I'm going to throw this up, get some pain up on so that they start going after my boy Scion so I can keep my Treya Health of Protection up as long as possible. Uh, be prepared for that final stage. So I'm going to throw some more dots up. As you can see, they're taking big damage just by being alive. EP might be dead, but his spirit lives on. Ooh, did not actually get the kill there. Very unfortunate. Kind of surprised. Throw up another Held by Hatred, and then hopefully I have this ability ready. Yes, I do, so I can get some more protection up. No, I cannot. All right. All right. Let's keep going with some nice little attacks. We'll get them eventually, I promise. <laughs> All right. I should take him out. Not quite. Okay, we have an Annihilate saved up for the next one. So this is where you have to think, do I want that extra Annihilate so I can be super beefy for the final, or should I save it? I'm actually going to save it since we're so close. Um, I'm going to throw this up first to save that, just to make sure they get the pain on the board first. Now I can throw this back up and they still have the pain. There we go, got a little bit of protection back, pop this. Hopefully we can get our Merciless Master cooled down before we go into the final stage of this battle, which is much harder than the rest. Surprisingly, it's not the, the Yoda or the GK or any of that stuff that makes it harder, it's it's kind of the, like, I'm gonna die and stuff like that, or the Eth Koth, rather. They'll occasionally stun you, lock you if you're at a lower level, so if you're in one of the first couple tiers, that's something you're going to really have to worry about. Oh, don't you just love to see them taking massive damage? Alright. Let's take the traitor out, reduce that cooldown for us. Hopefully that doesn't kill him, so maybe... Tr uh, okay. He's going to go in with 0% turn meter, which is not good, but he does have Merciless Massacre, so this is where we have to strategize. Hopefully this lets us take an immediate another turn. It does not. 
All right, so we come back, we throw this here. Okay, it's working, it's working. Now we can dispel. They're gonna go after him, he's gonna die, but I'll get another churn. Smack here, um. I'll go here. All right, there we go. Now we can take out Yoda. They're gonna have all of these buffs, which is super annoying. So I'm not gonna throw up the AoE because it's not gonna land. Oh, I forgot to click out of the taunt. Rookie mistake, guys. It's okay. Nihilus is gonna be so beefy at this point that it's not really gonna matter. We just kind of slowly work down on GK, reduce some turn meters. Nihilus is at this point is probably almost unkillable. So we don't have to worry too much about the run. And obviously the amount of stars you get on this doesn't really matter. Let's just reduce some of Nihilus' cooldowns. Give him a bunch of protection. Alright, so we should have Annihilate next turn. GK will probably be dead at that point, so we'll have to think about maybe Qui-Gon Jinn Annihilation. Not something you see every day. Alright, so we're one turn off of a Merciless Massacre. But we are going to annihilate Qui-Gon Jinn. Now, Eeth Koth is super annoying, so we're going to throw some dots over on him. Get a basic over on Mace Windu. Throw a Culling Blade, hopefully we crit. Nice. And we're pretty much set at this point. Now, getting here is the hardest part. It's not necessarily a challenge if you use this pretty basic strategy, but sometimes you have to do a little finagling at the end since it is such a long event. And you don't want to mess up, but basically just throw a bunch of uh, <laughs> throw a bunch of annihilates with nihilus, and you should be all good. All right, guys, I'll see you later.